Hi, this is Brooke, one of your admissions counselors here at the Viterbi School of Engineering. A quick pre-podcast announcement. Our early action deadline is just under one month away. So this applies to all my first year applicants, meaning you are a current high school student. If you want to be considered for merit scholarships, you must apply and submit your common application by November 1st. Also remember to select a Viterbi major as your first choice major. So anything beginning with a VSE. Now let's get your podcast started. This is Viterbi Voices. Coming to you from the University of Southern California, Viterbi School of Engineering. We're here to give you the inside scoop on research, classes, student life, and so much more. All of these shared by students, faculty, alumni, and other members of the USC community. Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Viterbi Voices. As usual, I am one of your hosts. My name is Paul Ledesma, Executive Director of Undergraduate Admission here at the USC Viterbi School of Engineering. And I'm your other host, Safi Patel. I'm a senior in computer science, and I'm doing my master's in engineering management. And who is this uh, uh, bright, shiny young gentleman over here? We got a return uh, co-host here. You want to introduce yourself to the to the group? Yeah, hi. My name is G. I'm a senior studying mechanical engineering. All right, Jeet. And you have, you're no stranger to the podcast. You've been here before. You've done at least one other episode, right? Or have you done more than that? Yeah, I did one, I think, last year. Very cool. Jeet, how is your year going? Uh, this, this is your se- is this your senior year? Yeah, senior year. Holy cow, you're a senior already. Uh, <laughs> tell, tell everyone else that's listening just a little bit more about yourself and where you're from and what you do here on campus and and also let's get an update on what's happening with you this year that's different than previous years yeah so like i said my name is cheat i study mechanical engineering i also have a minor in entrepreneurship um on campus i'm involved in vsa in consulting clubs outside of school i'm a huge cook i think that's definitely changed since the last time we've talked what's now that I have my a own huge apartment. cook yeah i've been cooking a lot recently Okay. I'm in my sandwich era, so I'm making a lot of sandwiches. <laughs> I don't know if we should call that cooking. <laughs> it's you know a good steak sandwich takes some skill. Oh, okay, okay. No, I respect uh, that. One. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad you said we don't. I'm glad you said that. So I was gonna say like, putting a sandwich together <laughs> is not cooking. It's like that's stacking. That's not cooking. <laughs> yeah, some people can still mess it up somehow. You'd be surprised, especially college you'd, students. You'd be surprised. Yeah, and then I'm actually from. China. I grew up in China. I was born in Thailand. My parents are Indian. I lived in China for 17 years before coming to the U.S. And besides that, what's different? I'm a senior, so <laughs> now USC is my mm-hmm. home. I don't mm-hmm. want to leave. I'm mm-hmm. so sad. It's my second last semester. Mm-hmm. I've been working the Bay for the last two summers, and I'll be there full time. So, did you say Bay, bit... Bain and Company? No, in the Bay. In the Bay. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. So, where have you been working? At Arco Murray. It's a national general contractor so i've been with them for the last two summers so that's been something that's new in my life which is really fun cool. besides that just trying to maximize senior year yeah it's on your bucket list that's something me and paul have been talking about a lot lately yeah you things you need to do before list. you leave yeah what's on your list i've just been trying a lot of restaurants in la so my bucket list i think is more to just maximize my time in la rather than mm-hmm specifically anything at usc what i think i've done pretty good at usc pretty what are some spots that are on your you know on your horizon what are you looking at that you want to go to i mean considering you're a master chef now like uh, how do you how are you <laughs> what sandwich at? places are you going to <laughs> <laughs> um you know i'm trying to keep, do a lot of hand roll spots mm. um there's some couple in culver couple i think near beverly i think there's some that are really far so now that I'm getting my driver's license, my goal is Ooh, to drive. That's to something new. Spots. That yeah, is that's something fun. new. Yeah, that is something new. Wow. So you're you don't you're you are in the process of getting your driver's license. Yeah, yeah. I have my driving test in like a week. And oh, why did we not have our driver's license up to this point? What was, <laughs> what was the philosophy up until then and now? How has that changed? Well, I had it. I had my Indian driver's license, and I just never got one um, here because all my friends had a car. But now that you know, it was I laziness. To, oh, it was of lazy. course. Oh, it was laziness. Because no, no, you always yeah, have yeah. the senior friend that 
has the car, but when you're the senior friend, like who do you turn to? No, it's because my freshman friends had a car. So I oh. never needed a car because I always had friends that had a car. But now that we're thinking about being adults and I'm like, I need to go in the real world. I think maybe it's time to be a bit more self-sufficient. And so that <laughs> is the reason I have my driver's license. <laughs> I'm maturing. Process. I love this arc. <laughs> Making sandwiches, getting my driver's license. I'm becoming a man. <laughs> it's it's the rites of passage. It's yeah, the rites it of passage. So, G, uh, you bring to us an episode here today. What's this episode all about? It's actually talking to other seniors about their time professionally at USC. So, you want to go through their recruiting timeline. Um, these are my friends and people. I studied with from freshman year all the way till now. So going to track their progress, see what they've done that's worked, what they've done that they found not to work, where they are now, and just some tips and tricks for any of the new incoming students. As far as engaging with industry like recruiters and internships and eventually going on to the full-time job search, that's what you're talking about? Yeah, exactly. Okay, got it. So that's the idea of just... It's, it's almost another job that you have while you're here on campus, which is constantly looking at those next steps and working with the resources provided to you. And, and there's, there's rumors exactly. and stereotypes and stuff like that that are out there, but there are some ways to engage that I think are helpful. Well, good. Let's get out of the way, Jeet, and hand it over to you and your recording here uh, of listening to students talk about those professional pathways uh, as students in the Viterbi School. Thank you. Hi, welcome back to another episode of VSA. Today, um, we're going to be talking about recruiting. I'm joined with two other seniors who I've known since freshman year, and I'm lucky to call friends. So let's give it to them and introduce themselves. Hello, my name is Isabel Reynoso. I am studying industrial engineering, and I have a minor in finance. Hi, my name is Booty. I'm a senior studying Mechie. Okay, so guys, today our episode's all about recruiting. You know, it's senior year, times are tough, everyone's looking for a job. Just why don't we go around and you guys just tell me a little bit about how your journey's been so far this year. Well, this year it's not going great. Last year I was <laughs> able to get an internship for the operations chief team in Trader Joe's. And I worked with the head of quality control, which is pretty cool. And I'm still in the search of a new internship for this semester. Right now it is October, so we still have a little bit left. and. The hope is still there, but yeah, it's been a tough time. I'm from Mexico and I am under an FYN visa, so it's hard to find companies that align with my interests that are also willing to sponsor visas. Yeah, I think that's one of the biggest difficulties that we're finding, like talking to most people are great, is that when you're international, you only have like one to three years, you know, to work and get a job and a lot of companies just don't want to sponsor, so that's definitely something I feel like all of us are struggling with. So what about you, Booty? Yeah, so uh, last summer I did an internship, but I didn't get the internship through USC. It was, it was through a family friend. Uh, and now I'm currently in the process of looking for jobs. And I feel like one of the biggest things that's helped is the career fair. I went to one of the career Viterbi career fairs before, but didn't have any luck. And I also went to one of the startup career fairs and also did not have any luck because most of the companies there are not actually hiring, but we're just, you know, trying to branch out. But uh, this, the career fair this semester was really helpful. A lot of cool companies who were hiring and stuff, and they were doing resume drops as well, which I think was really good. Um, and yeah, I've just mainly been um, applying online as much as I can to different positions. Uh, still in search, obviously, for a job for next summer. I do have the American passport, so it helps, um, you know, in terms of I don't need visa sponsorship and stuff like that. So I feel like companies are more willing to hire, but still have had uh, no luck as of yet. Yeah, I think... It's it's really annoying that you put in so much work and a lot of times, you know, it doesn't pan out. But I think that's what most people I've talked to also say, like just going to the fairs again and again, creating these connections, following back up with them. It's helpful even, you know, if not now, sometime in the future, you never know what pans out. Um, just for like our listeners, would you guys be able to share a little bit about what you guys are looking for, what industry you want to enter? What's, what's your ideal job right now? So for... The present, I really want to work with either a brewery, a distillery, or a winery. So I'm very interested in the manufacturing process of wine, whether it be like the actual like like product, like the production of the wine, or the bottling, or distribution, or like managing warehouses. So there's a lot of supply chain or engineering based 
jobs available for like, different videos. I know Gallo was at the career fair. I was there speaking to them. They were a little bit more focused on sales, but you can still reach out and find different jobs. They are one of some, the companies that uh, don't sponsor visas, but I'm still looking for like either smaller that are like more uh, that are looking for specific like engineering jobs and they don't really have that many engineering interns and that's what they'd be willing to sponsor or really like bigger companies like maybe some kind of brewery that is willing to sponsor so we're looking to that but yes I like the kind of engineering side of the alcohol beverage company well what do you think got you into that I think like that's not something you know you think a traditional engineer would maybe be doing I mean, I guess like industrial engineering definitely related to operations and manufacturing, but like, how come beverages? What why, what sparked your interest in the wine industry? So for me, I was actually, I started USC as a mechanical engineer and I realized slowly that I really wanted to go into the food or like hospitality industry. And I was looking for like an engineering product that would go into that realm. Like the idea of like, like a special product that is surrounded around the human experience and that weirdly is alcohol. When you have like, let's say like for Moet Hennessy, if you're selling champagne, like you're not selling just a bottle of like of champagne, you're selling an experience and that's what they're willing to buy your brand. So it ties together the idea of engineering, like engineer product, but also the hospitality aspect and the human experience. So that's why I'm trying to go into that realm. Maybe I can go into something with food. That's why I wanted to tra uh, work for Trader Joe's and understand like their process and like how like they choose their vendors, how's their quality, like what's like the food safety op like uh, aspects that I didn't really know of beforehand. But like slowly you get a bigger picture and I'm realizing like for wine, it is such an interesting product because depending on like the sugar contact, uh, like acidity contact, like it's such a different product, but it is like not, I wouldn't say niche, but it's a, like a human experience that is heavily engineered. So that's why. Wow. And what about you, Booty? I know we've also like, you know, talked about how we kind of want to stray away from a traditional engineering job at like, let's say a well-known automotive or aerospace company we kind of want to do more the entrepreneurial business side of things that's why i'm going to be a business development in construction post-graduation but what is your kind of goal right now where are you hoping yeah so initially i was uh, applying to a lot of the engineering roles but then i slowly realized you know after going through junior year and this first semester that uh, you know going into these really difficult engineering classes that get very specific and very content heavy i don't want to work as a engineer per se uh, post-grad even though i know that i could probably be very successful at it because i've been really good at it over the past few years but i, I like you were mentioning i really do want to branch into into business and one of the biggest things i mean the best positions right now that i'm looking for are, is project management because you can work at a company that could be an engineering company or an automotive company or even a construction firm, which is what I'm looking into right now, specifically construction, but you can work as a PM. Therefore, you don't have to be the actual engineer or the field engineer. Um, they're doing the actual engineering work, but you're handling, you're managing a team and you're, you know, prospecting clients, uh, managing big projects and stuff like that. And that to me is more interesting being on the people side and business side of it while still being able to understand the fundamentals of the company itself, whether it be a construction firm, an automotive firm or anything like that but i would say my passion is the automotive industry so if i could find something um at one of like a really good company it doesn't have to be a, a car manufacturing company it could be a you know a part company that does parts for certain cars yeah but a more business role then i think that would be ideal for me um but I feel like the market right now is, is kind of down uh, and it's it's hard to find these types of roles or people who are at least hiring for these types of roles, which is why it's just like a, a game of spray and pray and just apply to as many different roles at different companies that you can find. Yeah, no, I definitely, I definitely agree. I also like want to circle back to your point about, you know, being in a position where you can leverage your technical knowledge that you learn in class and still use that to further your um, social skills, your soft skills. I think sometimes in some of my engineering classes, I feel that lacks a little bit you know you go in you learn how to solve a problem and you solve it and yes they teach you how to solve real world problems but they don't encourage i think as much teamwork or creativity perhaps as i think might be needed in the real world mm -hmm. which is why i think roles with project management where you actually are client facing and able to kind of firsthand understand what the problem is and what you're solving for rather than just you know being behind a laptop doing a computer equation 
that makes a huge difference. But okay, despite, you know, us being in the process of trying to land a job, we are seniors at USC. We can say that. We've made it successfully three years at USC's Victoria School of Engineering. As so, I know we have done, each of us have done multiple interviews. We have like, you know, practiced it. What are your suggestions or what are your tips and tricks for any younger underclassmen who want to prepare for interviews? What have you guys found to be most helpful? Isabel? I think explaining why you want to do something more than just what you're good at. Because sometimes when you show, let's say like, cover letter versus resume i had uh issues before like a lot of my cover letters were very much caught like not copy paste i'm over exaggerating but very similar to my resume and i feel like people nowadays they want to understand why and what like drives you so if you're good at explaining that i think it will help you set yourself apart but also for interviews just uh talking over with people actually doing practice rounds uh, don't just go into it. everyone says it, but like, like you may be confident, but just do some practice. Um, what else? What is another good tip? Reaching out to people beforehand, trying to form connections, I think really sets you apart. I, um, made the mistake of not like trying to get referrals or reaching out to people through LinkedIn or through the career fair before. And I still got a great internship, but I think it sets you apart if you're willing to branch out and look for those like talent acquisition teams and see like what they have available and just shooting them emails and making sure they know you're interested. Yeah, I think honestly, one of the things that sets you apart, I think despite it being something that most people think is common sense is preparation. Um, I think you'd be surprised with the number of people that don't prepare for an interview which is why when you go the extra mile, you know, like, like you said, if you know your interviewer, just doing a quick LinkedIn search about what they done, on their work experience. Or one of my favorite things is interviewers will always give you time at the end of the interview to ask you, ask questions. And I think just having a good three to five questions that are specific either to them or to their company really shows that, you know, you have prepared for this company and that you are interested in how you fit into the company's overall culture and just I don't know, shows that you really do care about being at that company rather than just getting that position or that job but what about you Budi? what have you found to be like the most helpful things yeah I feel like Isabel hit all, almost all the key points there and what you were saying there Jeet, made a lot of sense the biggest thing for me is preparation also going into an interview it really helps to be prepared like you were saying and it shows the um you know the recruiting team that you've actually done your research and you're interested in the job position or whatever the internship position and that actually does give you the edge you'd be surprised how many times yeah people you know like you said go into these these interviews not prepared and these um it seems very generic to all these recruiters you know going through hundreds of rounds of interviews with all these different kids you want to be the one that stands out but another thing i will say is start the process early so going to the career fairs you know if you're a sophomore or junior starting that early because getting an internship and then getting a return offer uh, after is very common and I initially wasn't that like crazy about going to the uh, the career fairs because I didn't think it would be very useful but I learned this year that a lot of companies come to the only hire from the career fairs actually and mainly come to certain target schools such as USC to grab the resumes of all the talented kids here and it does go a long way so I would definitely say do your research in advance make a list of a few companies you, you would want to see yourself working at in the long term and you know start early because a lot of these guys do hire uh, interns and young interns as well and then hire them full-time after which would save you a lot more time in your junior and senior years where you're kind of scrambling to to sit you know keep up in school and all of that kind of stuff yeah I definitely agree I think sometimes it's hard to take a step back and to realize that a lot of the resources we get at USC isn't available to you know all the other schools like for instance like you said about the career fairs the company I was working with told me how they almost exclusively hire from these career fairs which is why it matters so much to them so when they come to schools like USC it means a lot it's not just another company on the list but it's actually someone who's come with a goal of hiring let's say one to two people from this career from this day yeah so i think yeah taking a second to kind of step back and actually realize what does usc have to offer and making the most of it i think everyone says that i also think it's important to note you can never make the most out of everything there's so much going on there's always you know new newsletters coming up it's it's definitely hard to keep up with it but i think just being aware of what's there and choosing let's say one to two career events a semester not a semester a month that 
it in itself helps you so much. I also think networking, personally, I think for me, when I was doing my job search, cold applying, as Isabel mentioned, with an international student needing visa sponsorship, sometimes is a much more difficult process that has a lot of red tape. And so I found networking, just, you know, connecting to people on LinkedIn, talking to them, connecting to people who have similar jobs that you want to do has been really helpful as well. So, yeah, that's, I feel like, okay, one last question I want to ask is, how do you think you went about making your resume? I think a lot of kids nowadays are a bit worried about, you know, how to do it. They put it through this website that rates it and ranks it. But then just within my friends, I feel like everyone's super successful. Everyone's resume is stacked with experiences and skills. Yet they're all so drastically different. So, Isabel, what, how did you make your resume? So, for like my experiences, usually it just kind of comes out of hobbies. So, I've done the nautical science uh, courses at USC for a while. I was a TA for them. I, from that, then found um, a research team for offshore wind turbines. And I published a paper with two professors at USC. And I was able to have those two jobs through like, like USC connections and just interests. And then like other parts have been like jobs on the side. Like I've done, uh, I worked for like bartending. I put it on my resume as mixology. So it doesn't sound that bad, but <laughs> uh, like I have a bunch of different things. And usually it's just like making sure like to put the highlights, what you think is most important for each job. And again, why finding a way to quantify what you did that's always super important and then i would put it through the websites and like sometimes it's really good to tailor it for like for a specific job because there's like triggering words or specific things they're looking for but honestly i send them to my friends and they will see like hey like this sounds weird oh this could be better because at the end of the day like you know like how to like sell yourself the best and like your friends can yeah, well i'm lucky enough to have friends that are good at reading these and that also have done a lot but I feel like just getting like a human perspective because yes, the computer is good at it and like they will put them through. But hopefully you get to the point where like a human is reading your resume and that's like what you want actually to like stand out and it needs to sound good. And that's why I usually try to get like my siblings or like even sometimes a professor go to the career center. There's always people willing to read it over. And weirdly, they usually tell me like, OK, start with Chad GBT, like explain the role. And then you tailor and see like, okay, like maybe they use like these specific keywords from the like job description. And then from that, you're like, okay, how do I take that like sentence and make it better and actually like showcase what I did? Yeah, I think like two key points there. One, um, most people I talk to say the exact same thing. They say, look at the job description and really look at how they describe your role and what your expectations are. And in some ways, just reword that and make your experiences sound as similar to that as possible. And then also another thing I talked about, is like when I was looking at your resume, one of the things that stood out to me was just how personalized it was. I remember something fun I put on my resume is like hobbies or passions that, you know, are extracurriculars like cooking. And when I asked you where yours was, you said my entire resume is my hobbies. And I think that was just really cool, like finding a way to tell a story with your resume rather than, you know, just having list out experiences as A, B, C, D. I think that's a really cool thing that it's really hard to do and you've done it well. So like definitely something for people to keep in mind. And what about you, Booty? Yeah, so when I first made my resume, obviously after high school, I went uh, to one of my uh, friends in Marshall for inspiration because I know that they were recruiting very early on and so they would have the format and stuff all hammered down. So that's how I chose the format for my resume. And the way I, I structure it is is obviously the first thing and the biggest thing is um, my work experience. But the, one of the main things I focus on are the skills that I uh, obtained or used for those work experiences and highlighting those. Also being able to quantify them really helps because I feel like after going to the career fair and listening to all these recruiters ask me questions about my uh, about my resume, that's one of the first things they do look at. But also it is very important to... Um, you know, put down some hobbies, some skills. I have a skills section on the bottom of my resume that, you know, put I, where I showcase my engineering skills, such as, you know, CAD, manufacturing, et cetera, et cetera, but also um, in, like business skills, interpersonal skills, leading a team and kind of putting those down there. Because when you put your resume online, when you're applying through the ATS, they have ATS software where they look for these keywords. So it still is very important, I feel like, to make sure you do hit these keywords. I personally don't 
haven't been tailoring my resume to every job because all the engineering jobs I've been applying to kind of look for the same things, you know, yeah. they have the same requirements like CAD, manufacturing, et cetera, et cetera. So I just uh, make sure I have my skills there. But yeah. Yeah. And then the last thing I want to ask before I let you guys go, what is something you wish you did earlier? Or like, let's say one of your close friends is just about to start college as a freshman at Viterbi. A couple of things, something you would change and you would tell them to do. What, what's on your mind? Hey there, Angie here, one of the Viterbi admission counselors with a quick message. I wanted to let you know that I'll be traveling to Washington, D.C. on Saturday, October 12th and Philadelphia on Sunday, October 13th for our Discover USC program. Come and find out more about the Viterbi School of Engineering and Computer Science. Don't forget to register online at viterbi.link slash events. That's V-I-T-E-R-B-I dot link slash events. Hope to see you there. I'll let you get back to your podcast now. Ooh. As a freshman, I think I would just say, like, try to be involved in, in things from the beginning. Like, I know it's overwhelming. There's so many things, so many emails at USC, but see, like, what you actually like. And, like, you get to filter out what you like throughout your USC experience. So it's nice to go abroad and then see, what, like, where you end up. And then, like, yeah, reaching out to people. People are always there to help. Like the first time I ever really talked to a professor was junior year and I ended up doing research with him and he opened up a bunch of doors for me and he was the one that helped me process my CPT for my last internship. Like really like reach out to the professors. Sometimes it's really hard to talk to them and you feel like they don't really care, but they are there for you and they do help a lot. Yeah, I think same. I think I don't I think I took advantage of the professors until you know, junior year. And like you said, they helped me with my CPT. Also helped me with a lot of individual professional mentorship that's been really, really helpful. So yeah, what about you, Booty? Yeah, uh, I'd say also reaching out to professors really does help because a lot of them are in the industry and they know what all these recruits are looking for in terms of if you want to tailor your resume, but also making use of the resources on campus. I remember, I think it was sophomore year, I went and did a workshop for my resume and they kind of told me what, you know, how the structure needed to be. This is when I was pointlessly Googling best resume structure and putting it through <laughs> VMOC and making sure I had all the points. Hey, we still do that, all of us. Yeah, obviously yeah. we still do, but also these these resources are there for you uh, on campus. So make sure you utilize them because obviously after you graduate, you won't be able to access any of these resources anymore. So yeah, just making making use of all the career um you know, the career center resources and all they have to offer. Yeah. Well, thank you both so much. I know you guys are like two of the people I think are most successful in Viterbi, in my opinion. So I really appreciate you guys coming and sharing some insights. And I'm sure the listeners are going to find this helpful as well. So thank you both and have a great day. Thank you for that lovely episode. G. Um, I know that when I was a fresh, or I wasn't even a freshman year, but when I was a sophomore year, um, it was definitely daunting getting involved in all of that recruitment stuff. And it definitely helped having older uh, seniors in different clubs I was in, like kind of navigate that path for me. So I'm sure a lot of freshmen appreciated this episode. Yeah, of course. I hope, I think my goal with this episode was to just show that there's not one right path. Mm -hmm. Everyone can, you know, do something different but most importantly i think the message is that you're not stuck it's very common you do an internship you won't like you might do your second internship you might not like that still and that's fine you have time you can always change paths so yeah i think hopefully this podcast helps a couple of people do you have an idea of what you want to do now? are you going to continue with your internships of where you're going or do you have like a whole other plan or yeah. what's happening in your specific timeline right now so I signed for a job in the Bay with the You're company. Yeah, I already signed at the start of the summer. I mean, at the, at the end of the summer, so the start of the school year. So it's, uh, it's been fun not having to worry about it. But I will. The be senioritis has really kicked in, though, hasn't it? Oh, as soon as <laughs> the offer went, that's the problem. But okay. yeah, it's a project developer role at the general contractor. So not a traditional engineering role. It's more working with city council entitlement with the pre-construction part of the process. And uh, so 50% of that and 50% just business development efforts, which is what I was doing last summer with them. That's really cool. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, Safia, how is your 
spooky season going. Uh, we're officially in it's, spooky season, and and you like scary things. So how how is that? It's How's that been going at a plateau, unfortunately. No one wants to see the new Blumhouse movie with me. Um, so that's a little sad. But I'll force someone. Fall break coming up too, so I'm sure it'll pick up around then. Um, yeah, I'm trying to also go to Knott's Berry Farm. Hopefully, if I can convince someone to go with me. G, G, are you going? Are, is this your is this your jam? <laughs> scary stuff? Mm-hmm. No, no. <laughs> I, I'm going to be a hot dog for Halloween. That's my oh. spooky season. And it's not spooky. <laughs> I, appreciate it. I, I don't work with spooky well, so. Yeah. I've heard some creative costumes for this year. One of my friends said that her friend group is dressing up as One Direction. I really like That's that funny. one. Um, what else? Okay. Have I heard of? My roommate is dressing up as um, one of the guys from Love Island. So, oh, that's... in overalls, I'm guessing. Yeah, in overalls, exactly. Okay. Yeah, that's a good costume idea, right? actually. We have someone else as a cheese. Someone's a traffic oh. cone. Okay. Yeah, we yeah. It's so diverse. Know. It is and, right. And and to to help me understand this, is this just like how you're gonna go to school that day, or is that for a party? Like, what is happening? What is this? What's what's I happening? I think it's just to go out like at night. Got it. Okay, so you're gonna be a hot dog. Exactly, I'm gonna be a hot so, dog. Safia, will you be dressing up? Will you be getting a costume for Halloween? Depends on what weekend Halloween weekend is. I'm assuming it's the weekend before. In that it's a case, Thursday night. I yeah, but it's after. But it's. Oh, an, I feel. Oh, like you're both. saying you're saying it's when both, the parties are going to be. You're saying when the parties are going to be. Whether it's going to be pre. <laughs> I see. I'm sorry. I'm I'm confusing things. Basically, since it's on a Thursday, people are either going to celebrate the weekend before or the weekend after. But there's controversy because weekend after is November. Doing in November doesn't feel right. No, but it can't, weekend it can't before is so early, but. Well, I won't be four. It doesn't make sense because you go oh. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. That's overkill. You gotta do Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. But I'm yeah. hoping it's weekend before because I'm not in town the weekend after. Because I'm getting on a Halloween flight. Parties, Halloween parties. Halloween parties happen the weekend before Halloween. Yeah, yeah. typically. But in usually, general. if it's like Halloween's like on Monday, Tuesday, it works out. Yeah, but then yeah, there's actually like Halloween, maybe. and so is anything going to happen on Halloween? On I Thursday? will be on a flight. So me no. Oh okay. Yeah. Where are you going? I'm going to Turkey. Whoa. Yeah. Cool. Oh wait, you mentioned this. Yeah, I think I like just offhandedly mentioned it, but I didn't mention that it was during the school year. Like I'm just missing class for like a week. Yeah, I'm like this sounds familiar. Like we've discussed this. I don't know if it was while we were recording, but I have no clue. I have some memory of you saying because you're going with your sister, right? Yeah, because she's running the marathon there. See, yeah. yeah, yeah, and I was like, why would you ever? I mean, why would you oh, yes. we did talk. <laughs> this was in the the part of the episode that disappeared oh it's in the lost it's in the lost recording that yes. never got recorded last week that mm-hmm. if, if you have we have hardcore listeners we recorded a full 45 almost hour long conversation that was never actually recorded <laughs> it I didn't go anywhere <laughs> it was a beautiful episode but unfortunately it was too good the world couldn't see it it's fine I, I'm, I'm glad there it was weird topics came up i'm glad it didn't i'm glad i never actually saw the tale there's multiple points during that conversation where i'm like i don't like where this is going and, <laughs> and i'm glad that i was trying to change topics multiple times and i'm glad we'd never actually put that out so yeah I'll or that it. it doesn't exist i guess i should say <laughs> not that we didn't put it out oh man okay cool well i'm excited here i'm sorry so safia but we didn't are you going to dress up probably I don't know which night it's going to be. And I feel like a Do lot of... Do you traditionally dress up for Halloween? Yeah. But last year, I repeated costumes a couple of times. The first year, I like went more all out. Like I had like three different costumes for it. Um, three. But also my version of costumes, like just throwing random things together. Like I could tr- be dressed as Harry Potter right now if I really try. Like with the things in my room. Um, so, <laughs> But some people on Halloween really give it their all. Are, are you saying that you have Harry Potter things just in your room? I use I have it at home, and that's not a far drive for me. So I could just pick it up and be Harry Potter tomorrow at class if I wanted to be. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, but this year I kind of want to dress up as, um, like the Barbie movies. You and my friend group were thinking that was last about year's that. costume. That was the no, one last but not year. like Barbie, like like the movie Barbie, like the OG like animated movies. Oh my god, the cartoons. Yes. Not no. Wait, not like the Dreamhouse. Oh, like like diamond like, castle barbie and like uh, mariposa barbie yeah it's okay niche audience it's fine 
<laughs> Jeet and I are think are just kind of nodding and we have no <laughs> idea. We're like, uh-huh, sure, yeah, do that. That sounds great. <laughs> we'll be good guys, don't worry. We're outside the demographic on that one. Yeah, that's okay, guys. Don't well, worry. I'm I'm excited. I'm excited to hear about it. Very cool. Uh, well, great, guys. Well, thank you so much, NG. Thank you so much for bringing uh, this to us. Always good to talk about uh, for all of you out there. It's October and the application deadline for early action consideration for your application early action submission deadline is November 1st. If you'd like to be considered for merit-based scholarships, make sure you get your application in by November 1st to make sure that you're selecting early action uh, on the application. Uh, commonapp.org or go to our website and we'll link you off to it directly. Uh, if you are wanting to learn more about our programs, we have multiple ways to visit campus. We have multiple virtual opportunities and we have our large open house on Sunday, October 20th. Uh, that's a huge, huge, I'm sorry. Yes. Sunday, October 20th, huge, huge day, big opportunity to learn more about our programs. We'll all be there showing it off uh, and it should be a lot of fun. Uh, outside of that, thank you all for listening. We'll be back next week with another brand new episode of Aterby Voices. See you then. Bye.